we should probably wait for a couple more people to come in anyway. I feel like give it until five past. Find out how everyone's week was. You know, Kemi, how about you? How was your week? Week was good. I actually, yeah. you know, I'm, I, I hate to come back and say, oh, I only did two readings and say three. So I've done my reading, my wow mm. reading. I feel quite well, Come good. on. Excellent. Well done. Well done. I was going to ask. <laughs> I know you were going to ask. And I didn't <laughs> to say, oh, no, I didn't do it. Or oh, I only did two. So yeah. I did my more than three. So that was quite good. Oh, excellent. Excellent. And which ones did you watch? I went back, you know, um, Justin was really cool. He sent us all of your past um, sessions. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So I went back and um, I actually did what we did last week and I wrote up and understood quite nicely what uh, uh, stop buy and buy, sell and all that. I wrote it out in my English so I could quite understand it. And I used mm. it in one of the trades and I was like, yay! Hey. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <Excellent>. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was good. It oh, was brilliant. good doing, and I went to um, what's his name? Um, Justin, is it Jay Adams? He's really yeah, Adams. On his okay. mastery. He's basic mastery. So I started mm -hmm. writing out my notes because I, I I I have to admit to myself, my brain cell is not doing as well as it used to. So I'm not remembering. I I, I read it, understand, and then forget. So I'm writing mm. it out in Kemi understand speak, which is quite good. Mm. Which is important, yeah, because it's you that has to process it and look back at it and understand it, you know? So yeah, that's good, man. That's brilliant. Well done, honestly. That's great. That's good. Yeah, I like Jay Adams as well. He's really like, I feel like he's a good teacher. He's very meticulous in the way that he teaches, you know? And he's, um, like, I feel like he's quite articulate. He's really good at explaining things in quite, in quite easy to understand terms. Jay Adams, I think. Yeah. yeah. I've been um, following Stefan's course though for the time being. He's doing like a he's doing a whole series on something called basic wave theory, which is um an interesting principle, but I haven't really used it in my trading yet because I'm not confident with it. But it's interesting. Do you know what I mean? It's like there are just so many strategies out. You know, there's a lot, there's so much to learn. There's so much to learn. It's really, really interesting. <laughs> so I like Jay Adams. No. I know he's important to his um classes for sure yeah he wants us to learn he wants us to know he said don't just sit there and listen participate and i'm thinking oh mm. yeah i'm gonna do that yeah mm -hmm. excellent excellent let's see if we've got more people have come in yes we have lovely okay no. brilliant all right looks like we kind of got a bit of a full house now so i might just get started uh let's have a look just check yeah, for, you know, that looks good. Um, Justin, you open the door, yeah? So if anyone else comes through, they can just get straight through, right? Yeah, yeah, I open it too, so everyone's good. Excellent. Thank you, all. Appreciate it. Okay, lovely. In which case, um, hey, everyone. Welcome to Hi. Sunday study sessions. Hello, hello. Can I get some energy? Where is everyone? Hello, everyone. Hello. Ooh. Hello. I'm in my pyjamas. <laughs> Don't judge me. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> There you go, some audio, you know, that's okay. You don't have to show your face, I understand. As long as you are, as long as you're here to learn, then you're in the right place. You know, totally. if, um, yeah, that's, this is, this is what we're going to do today. Today and every Sunday, we study, okay? That's what we do. We sit here and we review what we know. Um, let me introduce myself. Or before I introduce myself, I'd just like to know, are there any first timers here today? Are there, is there anyone here and it's your first time coming to a Sunday study session? This is my second, but I can't remember the first one. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, all right. Okay, cool. Second. Oh, we haven't got any first timers. That's good, man. That's really good. Okay, so we're going to go in today. Um, <laughs> and we've been running since March. Okay, so March, April, May, June. This is a brand new thing that has started. So you guys are here early, right? Um, what I am doing is I am helping new starters to pick up the fundamentals of trading as quickly as possible. That's my intention with these Sunday study sessions, right? So I am not um, Jay Adams, as we were talking about, or, or Stephen, or you know any of the guys that are on WOW. I'm gonna show you guys WOW later after we do the presentation, just so you know where to look to get an official education. This is not that, this is a study session, okay? So this is me, one of your peers, you know, hoping to share some insight, 
over the things that I might have learned over the past couple of months that I've been in this space. And hopefully you hearing it from me, it will add value to your journey and you'll be a more successful trader quicker. Okay, so welcome to Sunday study sessions. I used to ask who's come to every Sunday study session, but I know it's just Justin now. So shout out my guy, Justin. He's been to every single Sunday study session. Do you know what I mean? Um, and welcome to all of you new starters. Today, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a crash course. I'm just going to go from beginning through to end so that you guys can understand the fundamentals on how to read a chart. That's the plan. That's the, that's the, that's the intention today. Um, I'm going to make sure that you guys understand what a currency pair is. I'm going to make sure you guys understand what a pip is. I'm going to make sure you guys understand um, what market structure looks like. I'm going to make sure you guys understand what a candlestick tells us. Okay, and we're going to try and squeeze all of this into the next hour. So if I'm running a little bit over time and you've got to go, then go. Um, but you know, if you want to stick around until the end, stick around until the end. I'm going to try and get through it as quickly as possible. And when we're finished, I'll take questions because I don't want to skip it. I don't want to just kind of breeze through it. Um, but I also want to respect your time. So, excellent. Okay, Natasha, don't worry. Today I've got you. Today I've got you. Okay. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> All right. So go on, say something. Say no, no, I was just cheering. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, today I've got you, man. Don't worry. All right, so first things first, I'm going to share my screen so we can actually look at the um, the chart. See my background? That's how you know I'm about this life, okay? I've joined and I've committed. I'm here to stay. <laughs> All right, so what are we looking at? This is the opening page when we open the MetaTrader 4 app, okay? Or when you open, um, when you open the... Um, trading view or whatever trading platform that you use you're going to see these numbers and these letters and these symbols okay so we should all know by now that these are currency pairs okay so what we are what we are here studying is the foreign exchange market right forex is foreign exchange market so these are currency pairs in the foreign exchange market these currency pairs are exchanged they're foreign yeah so one is euro one is gdp right as you can see um let me just draw a line down the middle boom right so you've got euro and gbp you've got euro and usd you've got gbp and usd right so the one that's on the left is called the base currency the one that's on the left is called the base currency base 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 right b a s e and the one that's on the right is called the quote currency. Yeah. Q U O T E. Right. Now, the base currency is always worth one of itself. Okay. And the quote currency is the what is what is the value of the quote? Okay. So in this instance at the top, for example, the base currency is euro. So one euro is worth how many? Great British pounds. That's the question that we're looking at. One euro, because the base is one. The base is always one. So below it, one euro is worth how many US dollars? Below it, one pound is worth how many US dollars? Below it, one Australian dollar is worth how many Canadian dollars? What is the answer? Right? Um, and the answer is here on the right hand side. So one euro is worth 85 pence. Yeah, you can see that it's on both sides. There's a slight difference in the numbers at the end. We'll come to that in a minute. Okay but one euro is worth 85 pence. One euro is worth $1, 21 cents. Yeah, um, one pound is worth $1 and 41 cents. One Australian dollar is worth 93 Canadian cents or whatever they're called, right? That's what we're looking at here. That's a currency pair. That is what we are seeing. Is there anybody that that does not make sense to? It's good to me so far. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Okay, you said it, it's you or you're good? Good, I'm good. You're good, yeah, you're good, you're good. Okay, brilliant. Okay, cool. So as we can see on the right-hand side then, there are six digits. Okay, not always, not always. And sometimes there are more than six. Sometimes there are seven digits. In certain examples, you know, which we'll check out in a second if you want to, um, there are actually seven plus, you know, digits. Um, but... Right now, as a standard, as you can see, there are six digits as a standard, as a norm, right? Um, 
six digits, six digits, six digits. There you go, look, couple seven digit ones, six digits, right? So what are these digits? Well, let me, um, let me open a notes folder. Let's go from there. There we go. Okay, six digits. So we've got six boxes. I would like you to copy these down if you don't mind. One, two, three, four, five, six. Cool. All right. So the decimal point is usually here. Okay. Um, like we saw, it was um, one euro was how many um, Australian dollars or um, um, one euro was how many pounds was it? 85 pence. So 0 0.85. Yeah, something like that. Do you know what I mean? So that's where the decimal point normally is. Sometimes the decimal point can be here. If the value of the currency is, is lower, or like really low, then one dollar is worth 103, you know, Japanese yen or whatever, right? Um, but that is where the decimal point normally lays. Okay, so we've got six digits. The one on the far right hand side, we tend to ignore. Okay, now when I say ignore, you don't need to ignore it. You can, you know, use it when you're trading um, NFX or whatever. But that one is called a pipette. It's called a pipette. Right, and the reason we ignore the pipette is because a pipette is less than a pip. A pipette is less than a pip. Let me show you, look. So the number that's on the far right, the small number, okay? It's a number that it's like, it's there, but it's less than one, yeah? So we kind of, um, you don't really need to pay too much attention to it. You will need nine pipettes before you get one pip. So it would, right now, for example, Let's look at this four. So we're all focused on the same space, yeah? So it will go from four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then this one will go up to eight. And then the pipette will go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then this one will go up to nine. Do you know what I mean? Cool. So that's a pipette. We, we kind of ignore the pipette because it is less than a pip. Pip is the next one, right? So this is a pip, okay? Um, if a pip is to be viewed as a unit, right, this is a pip, singular, then you've got hundreds, tens, and units, right, which would make this thousands, okay? You've got hundreds, tens, and units. So if, for example, price was at 1.1000 uh, 0, 0, 0, and then whatever the pip is, it doesn't make a difference, right? And price was to move, to 1.1327 uh, and whatever the pipette is, it doesn't make a difference, right? Who can, who can unmute and tell me how many pips has the market moved? 327. 327, excellent, excellent. So that's all it is. A pip is a unit of measurement, yeah? If you are um, going for a walk, you say I've walked for 10 miles, if you're drinking water, you'll say I've drunk two liters. If the market moves, we say the market has moved by 50 pips or the market has moved by 100 pips, okay? So pips are really important because as you know, when we are trading, we make money by catching pips, yeah? We enter the market on a price per pip basis. So for example, if you entered the market at one pound per pip and the market moves 327 pips, you've earned 327 pounds. Right. If you enter the market at 10 pence per pip and the market moves the exact same 327 pips, you've made 32 pounds 70. Right. If you um, enter the market at 20 pence per pip and the market moves the exact same 327 pips, then you've made 64, 65 quid. Yeah. That's basically how it works. You enter the market on a price per pip basis. Right. And that's what we're doing as forex traders. Excellent. Okay. Um, let's go back to this. Okay. So we've got pips, right? Is there anybody who doesn't understand what a pip is? Beautiful. A pip is a unit of measurement. Yeah, that's what we're going to stick with. Okay. So I'm going to stick with GU because that's my favorite one to go to when I'm showing people trading. And I'm also going to turn my phone sideways because for me, this view just doesn't do it. Oh, I need to unlock my, I need to, um, Oh, there you go. Let's do that again. There you go. Okay, brilliant. Um, I think I need to unload the other. Let's get rid of it. 
Thanks. Okay, so what are we looking at? Are we looking at the hour view? Hold on, Let me fix that. Get out of the way, March. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so now what we're looking at is a price chart. Okay, this is the price chart. Oh my gosh, it's so fiddly and annoying. Okay, there you go. This is the price chart for GBP USD. See it there? GBP USD, right? So this is where we are right now. This blue line represents where we are right now, right? This is current price. You can also see, obviously, the path of previous price. So you can see the price has gone down, up, zigzag, zigzag, down, up, bounced around there, gone down, bounced around. And this is where price is right now, yeah? There's the number, 1.41644. So one pound is worth how many US dollars? Somebody? One point four. One point four. One pound is worth how many dollars? One point four is not a dollar value. It's a one point four. One dollar forty one pence. Excellent. One dollar forty one cents. Fantastic. Thank you. But you can see it's one point four one six four four. Yeah. So all the way down to the pipette. The sixth digit is the pipette, remember? It's not extra small on this particular screen. It's smaller on the other screen, but it's not small on this screen, right? So um, just remember that that's the pipette. It's less than one pip. So 1.4164, really, and then whatever the pipette is. So if the market goes from 1.4164 to 1.4165, the market has gone up one pip. If the market goes from 1.4164 to 1.4163, the market has gone down one pip. If the market goes to 1.4174, then the market has gone up 10 pips. If the market goes to 1.4264, the market has gone up 100 pips. Yeah, hopefully that's making sense to everybody. I'm sure that's making sense to everybody. Just uh, feel free. If I say something that doesn't, yes, yes, like, I really want it to be interactive. So if I say something that doesn't click, then just jump and be like, hold on, hold on, it's come again, and I'll start again. It's not a problem, honestly. Um, okay, cool. Right. So where am I? Right. So we know what a pip is, right? And we know what current price is. This is current price. Okay. Um, three more things we're going to look at. As I said, what candlesticks? We've got market structure. We've got time frames. Okay, these are the three things that we're going to be looking at today. So next is candlesticks. Okay, so as you're looking at this chart, it looks as though it's just one long squiggly line, right? It's just bouncing around. But when you zoom in, ah, I'm going to close that first. When you zoom in, there you go, you can see that it's actually made of small blocks, small rectangles, which are called, which are referred to as candlesticks. Okay, so candlesticks are really, really important. You don't have to look at a candlestick chart. You know, you can change the settings. If you look on the bottom right-hand side, you've got three different options there, but you don't have to use a candlestick chart. Um, but the candlestick chart I find is really helpful. It's, you know, it's kind of like a standard, you know, when you see people trading in, in movies, you see they're looking at candlestick charts because it's, it's very, very much so standard. I actually, when I used to work in catering, I used to work in catering in the, on the 20th floor of the Barclays building, and we used to cater for the stockbrokers. And it's a proper like stockbroker floor where they're up shouting, shouting. But this, you see these charts are all over the place. So this is the foundation of the financial market, of the financial industry. It's really something that you want to take some attention to understanding, yeah, so that you can um, grow and develop so that when, you know, in 10 years time, you can glance at a chart, you know, and, and be a millionaire. So, okay. Each candlestick gives us five different pieces of information, okay? Each candlestick gives us five pieces of information. So first is the direction that price has gone in. So if it's a black candle, it means price has gone down. If it is a white candle, it means price has gone up, right? That's it. So the direction is information number one that, that the candlesticks have given us. The next piece of information, oops, hold on, let me clear that off. Boom. The next piece of information then is thinking sensibly, if this black candle right here, yeah, has gone down, that means it started at the top of the body, right? So if you look at the, the number on the right-hand side, 
you can see that during this particular session, right, price moved from 1.27674. Yeah, if you can see the right hand side of my screen, then that's that on the, the, the little black box. That is where this, the top of this candlestick. So that is where price started. Price went down, and this is where price finished. 1.23967, yeah, this is where price finished. So we can see that during this session, it went down, that's information number one. It started at the top, 1.27, and finished at the bottom, 1.23. So where the session started and where the session finished are two additional pieces of information that each candlestick tells us. And conversely, if you look at the white candlestick next to it, look, it's gone up, which means it started at the bottom. So where this black candlestick finishes, we move on to the next candlestick. Boom. Oh, it's not moving. There you go. <laughs> Boom. There you go. Right. We start at the bottom. Right. And then we move up to the top. And that is where we finish. OK. And then we move to the next candlestick. Boom. At the top. And we go down to the bottom. And that is where we finish. OK. There's a slight gap. You can see that. Right. On the next candlestick, it drops a little bit. That happens sometimes in the market. Right. It's not that deep. But the principle is that where one candlestick finishes, the next candlestick starts. Yeah, if it's white, it starts at the bottom. You can see the price on the right hand side and it finishes at the top. You can see the price on the right hand side. If it's black, it starts at the top and finishes at the bottom. Excellent. That is two, that's three pieces of information now. Yeah. What are the other two pieces of information that each candlestick tells us? Well, if these are referred to as candlesticks, then these long lines that come from it are referred to as wicks. Wick, like W I C K. Yeah, like a wick for a candlestick. Now, some people call them shadows. There's a lot of different names for them, but that's what I call them, right? And what does a wick tell us? A wick basically tells us where price went during that session. So look at this current, this is current price, remember? We've just zoomed in. So this is where we are right now, okay? Look at this current candlestick that is being formed today, or not today because it's obviously a weekend, but it's a black candlestick, which means that price started at the top of the body, and has finished at the bottom or where price currently is right now. But look, it's got a little wick below it and a little wick above it, right? What that tells us is that while it was being formed, price went down this low and then it came back and that's where price is now. So to make it a little clearer, let's say um, this candlestick finishes and we move on to the next candlestick, boom. This is where price has started, yeah? This is where price has started. That will never change. So price goes up. Okay, and then it changes direction and goes down, right? But it will leave a wick just to say, this is where I was. I was here, right? And then if it pulls back up, let's say it goes here, there'll still be a wick to say it was there and there'll now be a wick for that, for this bit at the bottom where it was as well, right? Does that make sense to everyone? Everyone understand what the wick does? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, beautiful. So basically the, the wick tells us that price went this high and it came this low. Yeah, so five pieces of information. First, the direction. We know that this candlestick went down, went up, sorry. <laughs> Come on, Nate. We know that this candlestick went up, right? We know that it started here. We know that it dropped down this low. We know that it went up this high and then we know that it finished here. Yeah, we know it started, we know it dropped down that low, we know it went up that high, and then we know where it finished. And we know the overall direction. Those are the five pieces of information that each candlestick gives us, right? Now, the more you study candlesticks, the more you'll be able to see patterns because there are a finite number, like amount of, of candlesticks, yeah? It's not like an infinite, you know, there, there's a never ending, you know, there's literally a finite amount of things that they can do. They can only go up and they can only go down and they can only leave wicks, that's it, right? So if you look at them, you'll notice that some of them um, seem similar to each other, right? Um, like for example, some of them are quite identifiable. I think I might be on the wrong um, time frame to show you this just now. But there was like a doji candle that I wanted to show you guys. But I mean, this could do it. It's called Passes a Doji, right here. You know, that could pass as a Doji, I think, or maybe this, maybe not this one, but, you know, you can see the principle is the same, right? This 
is te- oh my gosh, I keep missing that. Not. This is telling us a story. What is the story that is telling us? Right? It is telling us that price started here, it went up, it went down, it went up, it done, it won't, it done whatever, and it finished in the same place that it started. Look. Yeah. See, all three of them are telling us the same bit of information. So the more you look at these candlesticks, the more you start to understand the story that they are telling you. Do you know what I mean? Like, what does that mean? Why would that happen? And the more you see it happen, the more you study, the more you learn from other advanced you know, traders, the more you will understand why that is happening. And it's really helpful because then at a glance, you can be like, okay, now's a good time to enter the market or now's not a good time to enter the market, right? That is the candlesticks. Those are the five pieces of information that each candlestick gives us. The next thing we're going to move on to is market structure. Okay. Does anyone have any questions about candlesticks? Beautiful. I love, do you know what? That's, that's a beautiful silence. I love it. Thank you guys. Okay. So next thing we're going to look at then is market structure. What is market structure? So basically um, you can see where price is right now. Yeah. Price is at 1.41. Um, price has moved. This is where price started and this is where price finished um oh no do you know what i should have done i should have done time frames first never mind okay so this is where price started this is where price finished you can see that price has dropped down and it has hit where the blue line is right now yeah and it has bounced and it's gone up it's come back down again and look at what level it's come down to you guys the exact same level and it's bounced again it's actually bounced it has reacted to that level a second time that is market structure. Look, it's come down again and it's bounced. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of zigzagged around a little bit here. The market is volatile. It's erratic. It's dropped. It's broken through this level. This level, look, it's bounced, but it's pushed down. Right. Then when it's come back up to the same blue line, which is where price currently is right now, it's bounced on the way down. Then it's come back up again. So what do you think is going to happen? now that the market has reached this same level, right? That's a rhetorical question, by the way, because nobody knows price could continue up. It's very possible, right? However, market, the market's very volatile. The market can do whatever it wants to do. However, there are certain times where the market is more predictable than others. Me, as an inexperienced trader that I am, I would say market's probably going to bounce, because it hit here, it bounced, it hit here, it bounced, it hit here, it bounced, it's broken through. So now it looks like we're on the way down. It's pulled back and bounced, it's pulled back again. It's prob- probably gonna bounce. I mean, I don't know, right? So what I would do is I would enter the market on a sell and I would manage my risk. And that's it. And then I would wait for the trade to come through. However, I wouldn't just enter the market on a sell because as you can see, I'm not in this chart at all, even now, right? I would wait for good confirmation candlestick, right? Because the candlesticks tell us stories, as I said, right? So right now, the story that the candlestick is telling me is that price will probably go up this month. Yeah, the price will probably go up. Do you know what I mean? But I don't know. I, again, I, I'm not in a rush. You know, once the market starts going down and I see it and I'm, I'm sure, wow, this is definitely going down. Look, it's got a long way to go. Do you know what I mean? So I can jump in whenever I want, but I'm just going to be patient and I'm going to observe the market and I'm going to study and I'm going to learn how to notice more things about the market. That's all I'm going to do until I know enough to just jump in and bust case. Okay. Um, so what have we got so far? We've got market structure. Yeah, market structure. So the market is bouncing around one specific level. That level is 1.41, right? We can call it 1.4 just for the sake of quick math. But that's not the only level. Look at this one here at 1.7, right? Look at this one here, which is up over at 2, 2, basically. Look at this one down here at 1.2. The market is bouncing. Every time the market is touching these levels, it is reacting. Yeah, hopefully you guys can see that. Even here, look. Yeah, when the market touches this level, it reacts to it. That's all it is. That is literally all there is to market structure. Okay, so it's not anything more complex than that. So it's, it's a case of, it's simply a case of, when you see price approaching a level that it has reacted to in the past, when you see it approaching a level it has reacted to in the past, you can make an assumption, you can presume that you know, the chances are, you can, you can gather a directional bias. Yeah? You can be like, I think this is going to happen next. Okay? And then 
You can wait for a good candlestick to confirm that you're right, and then you jump in the market and manage your risk, and you win the trade. It, is, it, doesn't, that, it doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. So what have you got so far? Oh, that was it. The levels at the bottom and the levels at the top, there's a different name for them. And I think it's important that you guys know that just you know, for the sake of it, right? So if price is on the way down and it bounces up, it has found support. Support. Yeah, if it's on the way down and it bounces up, it has found support. If it's on the way up and it is forced back down, it has met resistance. Oh, God, this is going to work. <laughs> There you go. It has met resistance. Makes sense to everyone. So the market's on the way up and it meets resistance. The market's on the way down and it finds support. Oh, that's what I could do. Nope, doesn't work like that. Fair enough. Oh, I'm back in the room. Hey, everyone. No <laughs> way. Me. It happened so many times. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay, and let's get back to... There we go. Fantastic. All right. Um, so I feel like everyone should understand the much so far. Yeah. So far, we know what is a pip. Beautiful. We know uh, what are the five pieces of information that each candlestick gives us. Excellent. And we understand the difference between support and resistance levels. And we acknowledge that the market reacts to them. Cool. There's one more thing, and that is time frames. So right now, we're looking, as I said, at the chart for GBP USD. Okay, this is the pound versus the dollar. Um, and as you can see next to it, or on the left, here we go, let's just do it this way. On the left, you can see that there are uh, symbols, I don't know, right, a letter and a digit. At the top, M1, M5, M15, M30, H1, H4, D1, W1, and MN. As you can see, the chart we are currently looking at is MN, right? That's what we're looking at right now. So what does MN mean? MN means month, month, okay? So basically, this is GBP USD, but it is the month view chart. So each candlestick represents one month, right? So what that means is this candlestick here that, that we were looking at earlier, this kind of sit here that we were looking at earlier. It started at the top. It went up this high. It went down this low. And then it came all the way back up here and finished after having gone down because it's a black candle, right? This took one month to happen. Yeah, this took one whole month. This was, in fact, the month of March when lockdown started. That was this specific candle, right? It was the month of March. We've got January. February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. In between this line here and this line here, we've got 12 months. Yeah. And then again, we've got January, February, March, April, May, and June, which is where we are right now. Yeah. So each candlestick represents one month on the monthly chart. Right, so and in between the dotted lines is a year. So I don't know if any of you guys will remember. I'm sure some of you. I'm sure some of you will. Um, but maybe like a couple of years ago, ten years ago, I don't know, 10, 20 years ago, two thousand eight, two thousand eight. Oh my days, two thousand eight. Yeah, one pound was worth two dollars. I remember it, and I never even went to America at the time. Yeah, but here it is. Right, one pound was worth two dollars right and then there was a market crash and prices bounced around a little bit and here we are today right in 2021 right but this back here 2008 2000 you see at the bottom 2007 yeah and then we've kind of moved all the way this price chart has been tracking the progress of the value of the pound versus the dollar for years yeah for decades right so um, right now, we're looking at the monthly chart. If I zoom in a little bit more, just 2020. Let's look at 2020, because I find that 2020 is the easiest way for me to illustrate this point, specifically because of the March candle. So I want you to remember this March candle, yeah? Starts at the top, 
and then it goes up a little bit, but not too high. Then it goes all the way down to the bottom. Then it pulls back and it finishes at the bottom of that black candle. Yeah. So it's, it's, it, the candle did, price did go down, but you know, like it didn't go down as much as it could have. You know what I mean? And it did go up a tiny little bit first, right? That March candle. And what we're going to do is we're going to swap time frames, and I'm going to show you March. So right now we're looking at the monthly chart, MN at the bottom, where each candlestick is a month and in between the dotted lines is a year. Now we're going to swap to D1. See it change at the top. So each candlestick is now a day, right? This most recent candlestick is now going up and it's actually a day. This was Friday. Yeah, and the next candlestick will pop up next to it on Monday morning. Or actually, probably about 11 o'clock tonight. Um, next candlestick will just pop up next to it. So, um, this is a daily chart. Each candlestick is a day. And in between the dotted lines, because obviously market's not open on weekends, um, not open to the public on weekends, sorry. So, in between each of the dotted lines is our four weeks, right? So, we've got or four or five weeks, however many weeks there are in that particular month, right? So it's between uh, 20 days or maybe like 25 days, right, w within the bracket. So each candlestick represents a day, and in between the dotted lines is a month, okay? So we can see right here is what I'm going to show you. This is, this is the month of March. Let me move along a little bit, actually. This is the month of March. Yeah, we can see it started. It went up a tiny little bit. It's gone all the way down. And then this is where it's finished. Yeah, so it started here and it finished there. This is a black candlestick because price has gone down. We've got a little wick at the top and a long wick at the bottom. Right, and that's all we're looking at when we're looking at each candlestick. Each candlestick is telling us what happened in the session below it. Even these candlesticks, yeah, that, that make up this shape. They're also telling us what happened in the session below, in the session below, in the session below, in the session below, right? Until you get all the way down to the one minute candlestick, which is just doing this thing, yeah? It's just living a free life. No one can tell the one minute candlestick what to do. You know, he's out here, right? So if you're looking to jump into a trade, my recommendation would be to firstly, observe the larger time frames, because the larger time frames basically are in control of the game, yeah? So if you're looking at market structure on the monthly time, time frame, then right now we are looking for an opportunity for the market to go down, yeah? The, we're looking for an opportunity for the market to go down. So let's say now I zoom into the daily and I look, I can see, oh, look, okay, actually price came up, it hit this level and then dropped down. And now it's come back up and it's hit this level again and it's got a little bit of static going on. It looks to me like any day now price could drop. Let me look for a good opportunity to enter the market and manage my risk. This is why managing risk is so great, yeah? Because if I enter the market now, for example, here, and I put my stop loss up here, then we're talking about what? Well, it might even be like a couple hundred pips <laughs> but that's because we're looking at a daily chart yeah we might be looking at a couple hundred pips between here and here what have we got 1.4164 um to 1.4264 let's just say yeah so 1.4 so that's about 100 pips that's about 100 pips stop loss that's not bad do you know what i mean if i were confident which i am not too disconfident in a trade like this, by the way. I just haven't jumped into it. I see a good candlestick here. I see a good candlestick here, but I don't know. So me, I haven't been studying GBP USD. I've been studying Euro USD. And the thing that's throwing me is that they both seem to be going in opposite directions. Whereas USD is, if the value of USD goes up or the value of USD goes down, then it will affect both charts the same way. But it seems to be affecting them both differently and it's confusing me. So I'm kind of staying out of the market for now with this particular currency pair. But I'd recommend you guys keep an eye on it. Why not? Do you know what I mean? There will always be another trade. There's no need to over leverage. There's no need to think, right, this is the one trade that's going to bust me. Do you know what I mean? Nobody thinks that way. There's no traders out there, who, no professional traders out there who are looking for one trade to change the game. Yeah, Every single trader out there is you know, uh, managing their risk and catching as many trades as they can because you know it's good. It's good. The better you get it, it's fun. It's interesting. The better you get it, the more trades you'll be able to catch. You know, and the most beautiful thing is, 
is that every single day there is an opportunity to catch trades every single day. Do you know what I mean? You don't have to, you don't have to jump in at the top and catch all the pips on the way down. No, as a matter of fact, do you know what you can do? Instead of, instead of um, jumping in here and catching all of these pips, right? Let me zoom out a little bit onto a larger time frame. Sorry, actually. Let's go for the monthly just so you get the point, right? You could, you could jump in here and catch all of these pips, right? Let's say between this resistance level and this support level on the monthly chart, yeah? This is the monthly chart. So you could jump in here right now where we are today and you could catch all of these pips and it'd be possible. If it works, great. How many pips is that, guys? Well, from 1.2 to 1.4, that would be about 2,000 pips, right? It would take you a year to make 2,000 pounds. I don't think any of us are here to really, you know, walk that slowly. You don't need to. You don't need to. Unless you have loads of money in your account. You don't really need to be thinking about the monthly chart, honestly. Yeah? You kind of want to be thinking about looking in the smaller time frames and catching better trades. Do you know what I mean? Catching as many trades as you can. You, the market is going to go zigzag, 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 zigzag. Do you know what I mean? And all of these are £2,000 each. Yeah, if you if you can get your head into that space. So basically, you want to be looking at the anything monthly, weekly, daily, or hour four for your strategy. So for example, I'm looking at the monthly chart. I think price is going to go down. Yeah, I'm looking at the weekly chart and I can see, okay, price has just bounced, it reacted, it's come back up. Yeah, I still feel like it's going to go down. I don't know. I'm not seeing any good signals right now to say that price is going down. It looks like price is going up. But Keep your eye on it. It might take a couple of weeks. This is the weekly chart, right? So I'll go to the daily chart. How's that looking? Okay, this is looking like it might be about to drop, but you know, don't know. No rush, yeah. Because when it when it does drop on the day that it drops, I'll make money. You know, I don't need to jump in every single and and hold my thing for every day. Do you know what I mean? I'll just wait patiently and jump in. That's what I'm doing, guys. I'm not telling you what to do. FYI, right? It's really important that I make that clear. I am not a professional trader. I'm not a million, I ain't got six figures in my account. Do you know what I mean? Like I am here learning and I'm literally just someone who's been here a couple of months longer than you. And I'm trying to put you guys onto the game. The, the way you're going to learn how to trade and you're going to learn strategies is by actually listening to the traders. So the people who are calling our trades on shift, Jeff, um, Stefan, um, Gus, they actually do classes almost every single day. They do live classes, right? I'm going to show you those in, in a second. Or a second, I think I'm pretty much done here actually. What's time saying? Oh, that was fast. Do you start at one? Oh my god, come on, Nate. Okay, hold on. So what have we done? We've done pips. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> we've done pips, we've done time frames, we've done candlesticks, and we've done market structure. Those are the four. And I and I'm pretty much done. Okay, cool. Um, in which case, let me show you well, because that's important, right? So, like I said, me, I am an advanced student. That is me. That's all I've got for you. You know, I haven't got the strategy that is going to help you to make the money. You know, all I can do is run you through the fundamentals. All I can do is run you. Oh, there you go. Look at that. My subscriptions. If I need to renew my thing. Okay, I'm going to show you later. Yeah. But on WoW, or Justin, maybe you can show them WoW. You've got your subscription still. Oh, hello? Yeah. Justin, can you yeah, show yeah. these guys wow, please? My subscription has expired. Yeah, one sec, one sec. <laughs> Under my nose. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Do I need to make you host? No, no, I'll do that. Uh, stop sharing. Okay, cool, one sec. It'd help if I share my screen. Thanks. Sorry, guys. Apologies for the delay. That was fantastic. You know I knew it was coming up as well. Thank you. That was fantastic. fantastic. Well done. I'm glad. I'm going to take questions in a second, but I just want to show you this first. Yeah, I just want to show you this first, 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 while I'm still in my one hour. Thank you, Justin. Okay. So, Justin, you're going to drive for me, yeah? Yeah, go on. Okay, cool. 
So basically, this is wow. This platform right here is wow. Um, as you can see, there are countless videos on wow. Yeah, one hour, one hour, one hour, one hour. If you open that um, precision trading for me, Justin, please. Yeah, there you go. Just tap on that one. So look, you can see that um, you've got on the right hand side, you see it says precision trading, winning sort fees, trading laws, um, just the videos, bro. Um, underneath where it says previous and next. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So we've got all the blocks, we've got precision trading. On the right hand side, each of them, one hour each, one hour, one hour, one hour, yeah? Packed with information, packed with information. Yeah, thank you, bro. And if you scroll down again to educators at the bottom, please. This is where this is where I normally go to. There you go, right at the bottom, right at the bottom. The gray boxes below. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. So if you look on the left, there you go. It says educators. And now you've got a whole list of educators, right? Each one of these, some of them deal with NFX, some of them deal with you know forex, some of them deal with market structure. You know, you got a man like Jeff, you know, Jeff, Jeff always comes through the education. This is where you can find your guys. Okay, me. This is my guy right here, Stefan. If you just hit pause on Stefan's lovely face for me, Stefan's just had a child. Do you know what I mean? Stefan, he loves his whole class. He's really cool. He's a really good teacher. And he's teaching, right now, he's teaching about basic wave theory. This is what I've been into this week, right? Um, yeah, thank you, bro. Exactly. Perfect. So he's got a live stream coming up in one day, one hour, and 12 minutes. If you can't make the live stream, the live stream, sorry, that's okay. Because if you just scroll down for me, please, bro. You can see at the very bottom, here we go. We've got some of his previous videos, yeah? So you've got one video there, another video, another video. These are all hour long videos on the subject of how to read the chart. Yeah, that's basically what these guys are talking about. And look, there's a see more button at the bottom. Do you know what I mean? Keep going, keep going. See more, see more, see more, see more, see more, see more, right? And that's basically my point. And it's not just Stefan that has this many videos. Gus has about this many videos. Um, just Jay Adams has about this many videos. Jeff has about this many videos. Um, I haven't seen all of them, of course. You know, I can't tell you who's got how many videos, but I can tell you that WOW has got all of the information that you need, right? Me, the only thing I will ever do on Sunday study sessions is give you guys the basics, the fundamentals. I will never, not until the day that PNT starts paying me to teach, then I might be teaching you guys strategies and helping, you know, but I can't do that right now because I'm not earning enough to feel confident to teach you how to do what a professional trader would teach you. I've not been trading long enough. Do you know what I mean? Me, I am learning fundamentals and I'm running my head through that and I'm making sure that I've got it. Um, and the way that I understand it, do you know what I mean? Is that you guys are, you've come after me. I know that in this space, you know, we can have quite a quick turnover. So I just want to make sure the people that are here are here to stay. Yeah. So Sunday study sessions is a place for us to come together and for us to study, to make sure that we're all, you know, focused on the same goal, on the same target. But Sunday study sessions is not the only place where you can go to learn. As my fantastic assistant is demonstrating, do you know what I mean? You've got it all there, yeah? You've got it all there. You've got everything there on well. Um, so please make sure that you utilize well, because what I'm, what I'm trying to say is what you are paying for in your monthly subscription is well. It's not me, yeah? It's well. So... That's what you're paying for. In fact, the one day, one day soon, I would like, you know, when I bring someone fresh into the company, for one of you guys to come and take the Sunday study session. Do you know what I mean? And to come and help the new people because that's all this is about. This is not about, this will never turn into an advanced class or anything like that. This is literally about helping the new people. So um, yeah, guys, that's what I got for you today. My name is Nate. I'm glad if I've been of any help to you all. Thank you all for coming to the Sunday study sessions. Um, thank you guys who have been here for like, you know, more than a few Sunday study sessions. Seeing you guys here every single time, it proper gasses me. I love to see it. So honestly, thank you. It makes me feel like, yes, what I'm doing is making a difference. I'm, at least I'm helping somebody. Do you know what I mean? I could be here just studying by myself, but it's nicer to study with people. You know, it's nicer to smoke with people. It's nicer to drink with people. It's nicer to study with people, man. So... You know, guys, thanks for coming through and studying with us. Does anyone have any questions? Does anyone have any questions about any of the four things that we've spoken about today, or five things even? Because we've got the base and the quote pair as well. You're very welcome, Bashir. Let me have a look at these comments actually, because I've been airing them. Hold on. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, Alvia. Thank you, Louisa. Salome, you're the best. Thanks, Natasha. 
Yes, brilliant. Oh, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. If that's our tenth of a pip, yeah, okay. Lovely, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Brian. Okay, cool. So no one's got any questions now? No one has anything they want to ask? Okay, I've got a question then. I've got one bonus question. Who can tell me? Who is Mansa Musa? A very rich man. Come on. Old there, you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Top trader. But yeah, I actually want that top though still. I need to get that. Come on, man. Brilliant. Okay, guys. That's all I've got for you today then. Otherwise, I'm just going to sit here listening to the beautiful silence. And I've, I have actually got other things to do. Sunday is a good day to study the markets. Why is Sunday a good day to study the markets? Because the markets open on Monday, yeah? So Monday, the markets will open. Today is a good day for you to remember. If you're being patient in this journey, then every single week, you're gonna be looking at the markets. Every single week, you're gonna be assessing. You're gonna make a, a prediction. What do you think is gonna happen next week, yeah? Look at the one weekly candle. What do you think is going to happen next week? The best bit of advice that I can give to anybody is to pick one currency pair and stick with it. Just study that one for a couple of months. Yeah, that's it. Just study that one currency pair for a couple of months. Obviously, take your trades from shift. That's what I do. Take your trades from shift, you know, but pick one currency pair and master it. And then when you feel confident with that one, jump onto another one. And once you're juggling like three or four or five, then do what you want. Take, teach the class. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Help someone else, man. Um, but yeah, think what is the market going to do next week? Do you know what I mean? And then watch it to see if it does it or see if it doesn't. Maybe jump into a little trade, manage your risk, try and catch a fiver that you've made yourself. Yeah, there we go. Come on, we got answers in there. Yes, Musa Ayo Mansa Musa was the 10th man of the Mali Empire, an Islamic West African state. At the time of Musa's ascension to the throne, Mali in large part consisted of the territory of the former Ghana Empire, which Mali had conquered. Come on. Who's that? My brother, Joe. We love to see it. <laughs> we love to see it, bro. Excellent. 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 <laughs> exactly that. Exactly that. Um, will this amazing training recording be made available, please? I believe it will. Yes. It has been recorded, as you can see. So if you guys can, you know, enjoy it, feel free to share it. You know, um, the only thing I would say is if you're going to share it outside of PNT, then just let me know. You know, in case you put any text next to my face or anything like that, you know, just shout me and let me know. I'm a good guy. I don't mind. But, you know, <laughs> it'll be good um, if you're asking people to join the company to let them know that we study every Sunday. Yeah, let them know. Let them know that we're here, right? Because this is not a money grab on anyone's part. Guys, I swear to God, I've not earned anything for today. For today, if you not want to, you know, PayPal me, net lyricist, I'm out here, yeah? I'm XRP. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not earned a penny. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm doing this because I really, this is not a money grab. This is a place where we are going to help our community to develop. That's what we're here. That's what I am here to do. That's what Justin's here to do. Justin, you brought me into this space. That's what Justin's here to do. That's what Salome is here to do. That's what we're here for, right? That's what a lot, that's what Nathan is here for. Do you know what I mean? So that's what Augustine is here for. That's what Carl is here for. So literally, honestly, guys, that's what Kasim said. Let me not even <laughs> because I've actually I've actually been here for too long now. So yeah, man, this is a space where we're here to help you. If you do have questions, feel free to ping me a message on Telegram. You know, um, I will point you in the right direction. Or if it's a quick one, then I will. If you want to do like a one to one, if there's a question you don't have, ask me, man. We're studying together. I'm learning. Yeah. So let's grow let's develop let's build that is all i have to say because i will just talk myself into a box so i'm just going to stop doing that now i'm just going to say goodbye to everybody i hope everyone has a fantastic week so a that profitable that. week bye, Nate. I'm see you next so much. Thank love you. you guys yes you're welcome you're welcome, bye, you're welcome. thank you so amazing. much thank and you. have a lovely week thank you bless up everyone bye. Peace, peace. thanks Nate. can justin <laughs>